Hey, 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 welcome back to Pure Victory Podcast. Matt here, not Brad and this time. I just did an episode with my wife, Louise, so much prettier and more beautiful than Brad. And that was so nice to sit with her. And now I have Walter. Walter, well, I got to say, Walter, my wife's a little bit prettier too, but I'm glad to have you. You caught me off guard there for a second. I thought you were going to call me pretty. But... It, it did seem like it, but I had to <laughs> I had to catch myself and go, no, that, that's reserved for my wife. But Walter, the things that you do in your life, you're beautiful. I know you're beautiful to your wife. I think that you are. You're beautiful to the Lord, so I can't say anything other than that. But, but Walter, I'm pumped to have you with me today. You've done so much with Restored. You've grown so much. You've, you've changed so much. And I'm excited. I've been wanting for a while, but I'm excited for listeners to get to know you a little bit, um, not only for them to be inspired by you, to learn from your wisdom, but also to get to know you because you're part of what we do. You're part of our community and part of uh, of just welcoming people to Restored. And so it's it's awesome to have you. Well, I appreciate your kind words and it's a privilege to be uh, on this podcast and and yeah, to be able to just uh, share a little bit of my heart and, and, and what the Restored Ministries is doing. Um, yeah, a little bit about myself. I, um, I'm married. I've been married for uh, just over 10 years. Uh, and uh, I have five children. And uh, I got two boys and three girls. So you could imagine I got a bit of a busy life, but uh, a very blessed life. And uh, I've, I've, I live in Edmonton. I live in the same city as you. And uh, so it's pretty cool that I, uh, I'm one of those uh, few guys that actually gets to see you in person sometimes. Just a two-minute bike ride away, right? We're close. Yeah, it's pretty pumped. That was a that was a cool thing to discover, and uh, so yeah, so uh, I am Canadian and uh, originally born in Guatemala, but I grew up here since the age of five. So, uh, as many people say, I'm pretty much uh, Canadian uh, uh, with uh, a Spanish-speaking Canadian. So that's right. You definitely yeah. are. You definitely are. Um, hey, we want to talk about community today because you're you. That's been a part of your journey is gathering people, leading people, and, and also just that's impacted you and getting things into light with relationships. I'm thinking though, before we do that, you want to tell a story about Louise and how people know me. Should we tell yeah. that story? Yeah, we. Sh- I think we should because it seems like uh, uh, it's been discovered that uh, the reason people come in contact with you is because of your wife, and so uh, it's. Uh, I think it's kind of fun. <laughs> well, and the reason we're doing this today is because of my wife. So, listeners out there, we should tell this story. I don't know if we've ever said it on the podcast before, but we had this thing happen recently that was just it took the <laughs> it took the cake of all stories. And so early in our marriage, Louise and I, she was a a children's pastor. And so where we live in Edmonton, there's two bigger churches on the West End. And she was a children's pastor of both of those, not at the same time, (laughs) praise the Lord, but but for three years at each place. And so a lot of the kids knew her. A lot of the parents knew her. My wife is so lovable. And so people, they just, they really loved her. And so they were excited about seeing her in public. And so she was single for a long time. Uh, a long time. What's a long time? She was married at 30 years old, but through her 20s, when she was in ministry, she was typically single. And so all of a sudden, this random guy named Matt comes along and we didn't, we weren't together very long before we were married. And so we met and met and married six months later. And so all of a sudden, I'm in this world where Louise has been known for so long. And so I get I get uh, I started getting recognized everywhere that I'd go in, in, in Edmonton, especially in the area where we live. Um, and people would just point at me like in grocery stores, like the clerk or other customers or people in restaurants or, you know, I'd show up at somebody's workspace for doing something like an errand. And, and it's the same thing all the time. People are like, oh, hey, you're Louise's husband. You're Louise's husband. And so Braden, actually, this is why I'm thinking maybe we said this before, but I'm not sure. But Braden started saying like, Matt, just get a shirt, like get the shirt. Say, yes, I am Louise's husband. And so Walter and I, we were at this breakfast with the listener, Joe from Indiana. And he flew up here for an event that we had a couple of weeks ago. And it was just awesome to get to know Joe. And so Walter and I, we go for breakfast. And Joe says to me, hey, how did you start the podcast? And I said to him this story about how I met Brad. And it was through my wife uh, being invited to speak at this event. And then she invited me to speak with her. And so, and then we met Brad and through that. And so I was explaining that I meet a lot of people through Louise. And before I finish the story, Joe interrupts me and he says, Matt, I got to tell you, I know somebody in Indiana 
who ha- who is dating a girl in Edmonton and she knows your wife. <laughs> and Walter and I just cracked up. And uh, and Joe said, so before I came out here, I told this guy in Indiana that I was meeting you and he knew that you were Louise's husband. I'm like, are you kidding? Even Even in our ministry, I can't even get away with it. And so then after this, Joe says to Walter, uh, hey, how did you get connected with Matt? And what did you say? I said, because of Louise. My wife actually uh, had met Louise at a mom's group and they became Facebook friends. And uh, through a series of events, my wife uh, noticed that Louise uh, posted up uh, restored ministry uh, things. And so she followed them. And then when we needed the help, that's how I came across Restored Ministries. So it was so funny. My response was because of Louise. Uh, and and what are the chances? <laughs> but that's it was really, so funny. Yeah. It was so funny. Literally two days later, I went to do a little speaking blurb at a different church. And the first person that sees me, hey, where's your wife? I know Louise. And and like this morning, I dropped my my boy off at preschool this girl gets off the out of her car next to me hey you're louise's husband right like i'm telling you lately it's been just just like it was the first couple of years of our marriage so uh, a little funny story that we should get out there i am i am louise's husband just so we know um but walter you are alex's husband and uh you you have a story of sexual brokenness in your own marriage i'd love for listeners to just hear your story and even talk about what what happened when you were young um and and with your dad and you're growing up yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, my story goes back a, a long ways as a child, but um, I got exposed to pornography at a young age and uh, didn't realize it was an issue. Uh, growing up in my household, we didn't talk about sex. We didn't have the talk. And, and it was just, uh, uh, it led me to run to pornography to get my uh, my sex ed. And so you had you had normal sex ed is what you're saying. <laughs> that's right. I have come to learn that that is normal sex ed now. Uh, so uh, growing up uh, in, in I would kind of dab with it, uh, dabble with it in and out. And uh, I didn't think it was a problem because I, I always thought to myself, I could always stop whenever I want or I don't have to. Uh, I'm not addicted. This is not an issue for me. And, you know, you would hear of other guys that had a problem with it and I'd be like, I don't have it that bad. But the reality is when you do something for so long and, and, and you don't do something about it, uh, it becomes part of you. And and it goes into your teenage years. It goes into your young adult uh, uh, season and uh, and even to the point of it coming into your marriage. And, uh, and the reality, too, in my marriage, we never talked about it. And um, I <laughs> thought my wife had an idea that I probably watched it, but she actually corrected me uh, not too long ago in here. And she said, just to be clear, I actually had no idea that that was would have even been an issue. I just thought maybe once upon a time he saw it, but that's not, that's not an issue for him. And unfortunately that was a lie because I did watch it for a big chunk of our marriage. And um, to the point that it ended up uh, uh, getting me into a situation where I wanted more. And, 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 and for those of you who have been in this situation, you know that pornography, uh, maybe it's like a gateway into something deeper, more sexual sin that actually led me to having a, uh, an emotional affair and, and, and acting out sexually and, and getting stuck in this sin that uh, almost broke my marriage and completely destroyed it. And I have to say almost because... Um, when my wife found out and i am i'm in a better spot today so i can say this it wasn't something that i i i had this revelation and said hey i need to go talk to my wife that wasn't me because of the fact is that i didn't even think i was broken i was so caught up in this sin that i just thought uh no this everybody does this this is just normal in our culture and uh when she found out and confronted me it began the journey of just exposure and confession and 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 telling her everything and and then leading to needing help and and it's funny how god works because guys i uh, before the confession part came my wife and i had a prayer time together and and you know we were praying for our finances we're praying for praying for our kids our blessings and 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 favor from the lord and i remember getting on my knees and going lord give me favor and, and and show us a way and direct us 
and and what a few weeks later this all comes out and i remember sitting there going this is not what i asked for but in hindsight you look back and go okay lord you wanted me to be ready for what you you have in store for me and i have to get rid of this darkness this filth this sin in order for me to actually see the blessings and your providence that you're providing for me and so uh that was the beginning of me being connected to restored ministries and um and starting the journey of what it looked like to get healed and grow and and learn from that i love it i, I love it i heard a great sermon um i was in canmore in the rocky mountains up in canada i was there a month or two ago and my friend sean franklin preached in this sermon it was fantastic he was talking about the guy who got lowered through the roof by his friends and and the lord says your sins are forgiven Jesus said that to him and, and the Pharisees are mad. And he's like, well, what's, you know, he, he, he goes through this whole thing, but eventually he, he heals the guy, which is what he's actually looking for. And Jesus just, he, he first, before the healing, he said, Hey, your sins are forgiven because what Sean was saying, pastor Sean was saying is that Jesus gives you what you need before he gives you what you want. And this guy came for physical healing, but more importantly, Jesus got the sins forgiven. And that's what happened with you is you were praying for favor. You're praying for all these things. That's what you want. But Jesus is like, but I know what you need. You need the exposure and the healing in your life and your marriage. And that's so often something that we don't want to go through. But on the other end of it, it's better. Um, I, I got a question, Walter. Sorry. I just wanted to ask because I got a question. Somebody asked me lately, what's an emotional affair? Like what? How do you know you're in an emotional affair uh, what does that look like? And maybe are some people doing that and they're not even aware of it? Yeah, good question. I, I don't even, uh, I think when I was in it, Matt, I don't know if I would have told you I was in an emotional affair uh, because I just was blinded by that and, 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 and not seeking to be healthy. But uh, an emotional affair would be um, where you're uh, in contact with the opposite uh, sex or uh, another person that's outside of your marriage where you're texting uh, phone calls where you're flirting, where whatever that entails, where you're now connected to them and feeling like you need them uh, to satisfy whatever need uh, emotionally. And where that person takes the spot of, in my case, my wife, um, where I was feeling this is like a person I can run to uh, by communicating with them, texting them and so on, uh, social media, and, and almost having like a relation it's having a relationship with them um where um like i said that they're taking that spot of what my wife should have yeah no it's a really good a really good way to put it for sure and so if you know that's why i say sometimes that porn freedom can be an idol because we think well i gotta get porn out like that's the whole thing but there's so many other areas of brokenness or or other perversions that we get caught up in and emotional affair is one of them or just you know sending messages because in, in your case it was one particular person yeah and in other people's cases it's they've got 20 girls or 20 guys on the go and yeah. they're just sending messages there's not one in particular but they're getting that emotional affirmation or or the desire for community they're getting that met through other people outside of their spouse right yeah and, and that's the i'm glad you bring that up because it's it, you end up getting caught in this um uh in this spot where you um, you desire it and 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 you start manipulating your life uh, to cater to this. So now you're 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 lying on what you're going to do. Now you're you're um, you're 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 stealing. I like to say you know you lie, cheat, and steal because you, you're lying on what what you're doing and how you're do, uh, planning your life. You're cheating uh, because now you're uh, not with your wife and um, you're. Um, uh you're stealing that time uh as well from your family and from the things your responsibility and and so i i think that it's it's important to realize that just because you're not acting out uh it doesn't mean that it's not doing any damage really good way to put it really good way to put it and so you're the host of pure freedom community which is our online community for men over 18 free to join for everybody and and we just want to talk a little bit about not just the actual community, but like the the help that community has in our life, the the value of that. 
And um, but I, I want to say just about peer freedom community. The reason we have it is because we're on a mission to help a lot of people. We want to help a million people and we want to help more than a million people. And so we have this community because we realize not everybody is going to be there for personal support. Uh, also, not everybody necessarily needs personal support. I'm not saying that to people who are who are engaged in sexual sin. If you're engaged in sexual sin, you need you need support. But um, but some people are free of it, living in victory, and they want to know how to help more. They want to know how to help better and be more equipped. And so, um, Pure Freedom Community Online, we do different teachings and Bible studies and prayer nights and um, challenges and and different just different things that that are involved in the community. We encourage every man to get involved with it. And you can go to PureFC. Dot ca pure fc for pure freedom community pure fc dot ca or you could find it at our website at restored ministries dot ca as well and so if you're if you're wanting to get involved in community and get in touch with us get in touch with just different guys it's a place that's so safe and and guys are vulnerable and supportive and pray for each other and it, it's really awesome um but walter maybe speak to the speak to the value of community of having brothers in your own life what that's done for you and uh and, and yeah, just whatever thoughts you got. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, community is one of those things that uh, you don't realize how valuable it is until you give it a shot. Uh, especially when you're talking about uh, pornography. You know, pornography is one of those issues when they come, and we're not here to play a comparison game with other drugs and other things that make us addicted. addicted. Um, but pornography is one of those things that you want to keep it to yourself that you could be walking with it for years and nobody would ever know. Trust me, I know. <laughs> and so, uh, and a lot of, a lot, you know, a lot of guys would, would uh, agree with that statement. And so you could walk with it and never show any symptoms that you struggle with it. And, and so it, it's so easy to get caught up in this isolation, in this, in this, in this uh, uh, solitude state of, of, of just uh, swimming in your own filth, if we can say it that way. And, and community for me, uh, first of all, showed me that I wasn't alone because at one point you'll feel like you are the worst uh, human being on the earth, that nobody has ever done this. Uh, you end up taking pornography or whatever sexual sin that you might be part of. You make that your identity. And, and when you realize that actually, no, there's more to this uh, than, than me just uh, uh, choosing this. Uh, and let me, let me, stop there for a second and say i don't think anybody goes into pornography thinking oh i can't wait to mess up my marriage i can't wait to uh, to to break people's heart and and to lose the trust of the, my loved ones that is never i don't think i don't believe that that's ever the intention but because of addiction and bad habits and and and, and just getting stuck then it escalates and, and that's where you end up and so when you realize that in community you can you can help each other um, with guys that are in the journey with you, and you go, okay, this is what I'm learning. This is what God is showing me. Uh, this is how what I did when I went through that. Uh, which, by the way, I think that's why it's important. I'm glad you alluded to this too, Matt. Where uh, when you get to this point of being healthy, community is still very important because you're now your testimony, your story of grace can now be uh, the story that will help another man uh, get free and stay free, and which is very important. But then there's also something about being side by side, arms in arms with another guy and a group of guys and going, we're, we're in this battle, but we're going we're gonna to beat this. We're going to win. And, um, and, and we, we got your back. Got your back in the sense of give me a call if you are feeling tempted. Let me pray for you. Uh, on whatever scenario you're going through in your season right now, it, we can go on and on. But community is another way of bringing the sin into the light and keeping it in the light. I love it. I remember uh, just with what you're saying, I, you're making me remember this one guy in Pure Freedom Community. It was late one night. It was maybe like 10 or 11 at night. And he put a post up. He's like, I'm just really struggling right now. And can somebody pray with me? And when one of our guys on the community hopped on a Zoom call just randomly with this other guy, they're like not they're in different countries and they just prayed with each other and talked with each other. And it, it's just so cool. Like that's part of the the power of community and being in a place where you do have people that you can reach out to. 
we're in an online world now where there's really no excuse or no reason why you have why why you're alone. You could be alone in your city. And I remember that. I remember being involved in porn and and sitting in my apartment literally thinking like if I wanted to call someone right now, who would I call? Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking I actually have nobody to call. And it was a sad place, <laughs> sad place to be, but porn isolated me. And now with the, with an on, with pure freedom community being available for guys there's there's almost no excuse for for somebody like me to be in that state because you can always reach out and you can always put a post up um and you can say hey i need i just need help right now i don't i don't know if we've ever had a post come up from a guy in the community where they haven't had a response because people yeah. care they genuinely care um and so but one thing that people think uh, i don't know if this will be the same is is they want in-person community versus online community and uh could you speak to that walter uh yeah for sure and i'm a huge advocate by the way of the online community even though uh, once upon a time i would have said i love like i'm a i'm a social guy i can one-on-one in person that's where i'm at i love that opportunity to be able to connect with people but when you have an opportunity like the 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 pure feeding community that brings people from around the world international and and allows you to instantly access all types of stories all types of people uh all types of victories uh that god is what god is doing in their lives that's that's priceless uh and so i i'll take that i'll take that any day that i can jump on a call and be in a zoom call with a group of guys and four or five countries are being represented because that's what that's what being in community is all about and and you get to see how god is working all over the place um and 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 i just wanted to add something else matt and and regarding to being in community is that sometimes in your own life you may not have people that you feel safe with uh especially at the beginning when when you're confessing or you're 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 sharing what you're going through and what i love about this community because everybody has a story i have yet to see any guy judge anybody else in fact i have the welcoming uh aspect of this and the 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 sharing of love and forgiveness and and just uh this warmth of saying hey you're part of this community and we want to walk with you I don't, I don't know where, where you find that. And, and, and I, I hope you're finding that in your church, but in this community, um, you're not gonna, you can, you can forget about feeling condemned and, and shame thrown at you. You're going to feel the support that you're actually probably longing for. Yeah, that's a huge point. It, it's so true. And, you know, it, sometimes it's hard to confess, you know, I struggle with porn or masturbation. Um, and, and sometimes it's hard to confess that, but on a deeper level, there's like, what kind of porn is it? Or what goes on in your head when you're lusting? I mean, those are things, or who are the people that you're lusting after? Those are those are sometimes things that have a deeper level or deeper layer of shame to them. And so even when we confess porn or masturbation, getting to the point where you can confess the deeper stuff too, there's so much power in that. And I find often that that's missing in a lot of, you could call it accountability groups, church groups, men's groups, uh, sermons, whatever, like we talk about pornography, the epidemic that it is, but what if it's incestual pornography and you've had incestual sexual relations in your past? Or what if it's, what if it's bestiality that you keep going to bestiality porn with animals and, and you've actually acted that out? I mean, these, they, these stories are real with people in the church who genuinely love the Lord, who want to read the Bible, but feel condemned when they do it. Or they read the Bible and just try to avoid their sin because they're they're so ashamed of it. Because yeah, sure, other people struggle with porn, but not the kind of porn that I watch, or they haven't done the things that I've done. I remember three and a half years ago, this guy was in a Facebook group that we had with about three hundred and thirty guys or so, and and he was he took he took in a day of teaching. He was super on fire. He was so excited. He's making posts. It was literally like day two or three. Um, of being involved where he sends me this private message he's like matt nobody can relate to me nobody watches the porn that i watch and so he never came back we i mean i know who he is but but uh, but he's never been involved in any help and he's gone astray like he's fallen from the lord and it's really sad to see what's happened but his porn was same-sex porn i mean 
if you're listening to this and you're or watching and 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 you've struggled with same sex porn, same sex attraction, same sex encounters in your past, I'm here to tell you you're not alone. I mean, you're far from alone. I get asked that a lot. Do you do you guys deal with this? And it's like, yeah, every day. <laughs> like we deal with it a lot. And there's lots of different kinds of things. You know, I mean, people fantasizing about their uh, their their wife's friends or their husband's friends or you know, or, or, or there's been child porn stories. Uh, some, obviously there's legal implications and we're not as open with some, but, but I'm here to tell you that in the community, there's people who have struggled with almost everything under the sun. And mm -hmm. I, and I'm not naive enough to say, Oh, I've heard it all. Cause I keep hearing new things and it's good. But the reality is God's grace covers it all. And, uh, and Walter, you were saying that Jesus died for all sins, all kinds of fantasies mm -hmm. and the, the different encounters that people get involved in, eh? Yeah. Uh, well, and, and can I just add a, another thing to your list there, Matt, is that if you're listening to this and you go, well, I actually don't have a story like that. And all I do is just watch innocent porn or that was uh, me. right or soft porn, or maybe you, you get addicted to when you're at the store finding the magazine aisle so you can just go look at that that swip, uh, swimsuit edition or whatever. Uh, can I tell you that 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 can be an, it might not seem like a problem, <laughs> but that's where the seed is planted right. and do not let that get rooted and grow into something else that you may regret or end up uh, hurting your family in the future. And so with that being said, uh, Jesus died for all of that. And, and, and I think... Um, what I love about the community too, we're not here into, even though we've pointed out the different aspects of, of, uh, of, you know, sin, I guess, uh, we're not here to compare, uh, because Jesus, uh, regardless of where you're at, he wants you and he is, he has forgiven you if you're willing to accept that. And he loves you. Uh, and, and we've been talking about, and we're saying, you know, come as you are, come as you are. And, and, and you don't have to be put together, but you don't have to stay as you are. And that, I think, it's a, is a, as a message of hope because there is hope for you to get help, healthy, and, and, oh, my goodness, grow into whatever God's calling you to do in the next stage of your life. Which is so much. It's so much. You know, in, uh, in Zechariah 3, I love it. It says that, you know, Joshua's dirty. He's wearing these filthy garments and... And the, the angel of the Lord is instructed to take them off and and uh, clothe him with white pure garments and and he does it and he says later on in Zechariah three he says if if you would listen to my words listen to my commands you will have charge in my courts and I just think that's so cool that Joshua was in sin he was dirty and then the grace of God made him clean and God never gave up on him God is like hey there's more for you if you listen to my words. He doesn't say, then I'll love you. Then I can make you clean. Then you'll have my grace. No, no. He's like, I love you. <laughs> that's that's the non-negotiable. But he says, but there's more for you. And if you listen to my words, uh, you will have authority. You will have purpose that you live out. You will make a difference in people's lives. And that's what I love about the community aspect of it, is that we do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Walter, you, were, you did one-on-one -on -one coaching. I mean, there's lots of people, and I love the one-on-one -on -one coaching. To me, it's like, there's a, a, a super cool intentional discipleship aspect to it where you're discipling someone so directly in the things of the Lord, direct to their story. But you do it in the group context too. There's discipleship in the group context. But what's missing in the one-on-one -on -one component that we have in the group is that as you're journeying into, into healing and you're experiencing freedom and, and all of this uh, that the Lord has for you, What's happening is you're starting to see that you have a voice for other people too, and you're able to impact other people. And the more that God that God says to you, "Hey, confess your sins," and then you do it, you're realizing that oh, I have I have an influence in someone else's life, and that's really cool. The best um, uh, rehab facilities in the world uh, they have purpose. They give their their people some role, some responsibility in the community, whether it's selling something at a thrift store or making volunteer meals for 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 the homeless or whatever like they give some they give something to do to the people who are trying to get out of addiction mm -hmm. and that's what we've seen in the groups and in the community aspect where people are hurting but then they realize in this like wow i have a voice and mm -hmm. i get to pray out loud for other people for the first time 
or I get to speak into somebody's life, even though I'm I'm hurting and I'm trying to get out of things, I have a voice to lead others. And we don't put people in positions of leadership uh, prematurely. We at least we try not to. I mean, we, we try to be diligent with that and and train people up. But even before people are ready for that, they have a small amount of influence, and outside of community, they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to experience that. I love that, Matt, because you're right. Uh, how I've seen guys contribute to other people's lives, and they might just be weeks ahead uh, of uh, in the journey, and it just it goes to show you that. God can start using you instantly if you surrender and you humble your life to him. And instantly you can start sharing what God is doing, even if it's not from a teaching perspective, but it's just a sharing perspective. I say, guys, this is what God is doing in my life. And this is how he's restoring me. And this is how uh, he's bringing back the puzzle together in other areas of my life. That's an encouragement to somebody else. And if we don't speak up, how are they going to hear that? That's awesome. That's awesome. Walter, you said something about um, isolation being a thief. You said it to me before we were recording. It's a thief. What What do you see uh, in terms of isolation stealing things from your life? What kinds of, what kinds of things does it steal? Oh, so isolation, it's incredible what um, this lie that we bought into uh, and just thinking that I got this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do this by willpower. Um, I can I can figure it out on my own, and this we 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 can get stuck in this um, idea that we don't need anybody. We just need we just I'll take care of myself, and that's that's who I uh, uh, that's all I need to worry about. And the reality is that when we're in isolation, uh, it, well, we've already touched on it a little bit. It steals from the impact that we can do to others by sharing our story. Uh, it steals the ability to take in and to be blessed by others by their stories as well. Uh, and just the, um, I think the enemy just loves to create this, this, uh, this lie that uh, we've already arrived and there's no, we don't need to grow. And the reality is that I think as human beings, we're on a journey to grow, continued learning. And when we don't get into community, uh, we're being closed-minded and we're being... Um, um, we're being stuck. And I, I buy into that line that says you're either growing or you're dying, or maybe another word uh, will define it as you're decaying a little bit slower because we don't realize it though. But one day you wake up and you go, how did I get here? Well, it's because I stopped learning. I stopped growing. And that's the beautiful part about when we're reading our Bibles and we're investing in our relationship with God that he, he pours into us and we continue to grow uh, and so I think isolation steals, I'm going to put it bluntly, I think it steals everything. And, and, and I'm not even going to categorize it because I think it, it has the ability to, to stunt your growth and to hurt your family, uh, your relationships, the, the relationships that matter to you, and even relationships that uh, you don't even know that you could have yet that become a very crucial um, pillars in your life moving forward. That was rich. That was rich. I love it. It's uh, it's so so true and so powerful. The power of community has been one of the, the one of the coolest things that that I've experienced in terms of just watching the Lord work and watching the impact stories and the transformation stories in guys' lives. I'm like, man, there's a lot that happens in groups and in community. And so, if you're listening out there, I just really want to encourage you. Um, to get involved with Pure Freedom Community. It's for men over 18. It's free to join. If this is something that you can bring to your churches, bring to small groups, bring to your men's ministry guy, bring to your women's ministry guy to get their husbands involved. <laughs> Everybody knows that husbands act the most in churches when their wives are pushing them. So that's <laughs> something to consider. But this is uh, this is something that's really vital, and and people need to need to join something where they realize that they're not alone, they're safe, and they can get help. And so, uh, yeah. Any last words on 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 the community or anything, Walter? Yeah, Matt. I I, I think uh, just to to state it, you know, the best part about the pure feeding community, out of all the other benefits we just shared, it's free. So just you don't have to do anything except go put in your name and sign up, and and just see what uh, what will take place, and uh, we can then start from there and offer you other resources and and what one on one and group coaching looks like and 
there's a lot of other things that are happening in the peer feeding community, like uh, weekly Bible studies and, and uh, once a, a month prayer nights. Uh, there's so much going on that uh, I don't I don't know how you would uh, arrive there and think it was a waste of your time. That's right. That's right. It's it's free, but it might cost you something not to join to stay isolated. So yep. we encourage you to do that. PureFC.ca. There's a link in the show notes too. Walter, thank you so much for coming on your first podcast with us. I know you've done. It's not your first, but uh, but just pumped to see you just continue to grow and the Lord continue to increase your influence because of the journey that you've gone on. So thanks for sharing. Well, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure.